So when it comes to building out applications, if you want to get your application to be as fast as possible and you really care about making the performance and latency as good as you can, you often need to utilize something like a cache on your API endpoints so that your endpoints return data as fast as possible. So before I dive into the example, I do want to say this video is sponsored by Upstash, which is the service we will be using for using Redis as our cache. I'll walk you through how to get set up with that real quick, um, but I do have an account. I'll just go ahead and log in. And I went ahead and already created a regional database, which is here. And I have like some endpoints and some passwords. And let's just kind of show you why caching is important. And I'm going to come back and walk you through how you can use Upstash to basically get this all set up if you wanted to. Let me show you the setup. We have a local Next application here. And it's running on my computer on localhost 3000 right now. And when I click on this section, it makes a request to my TRBC endpoint. That fetches some data from my database using Prisma. It does a couple of SQL queries and you get some data back, which basically is some users who have commented on a post. So we're going to pull this up because that's what we want to focus on. Notice here that when you make a request to this endpoint, it takes about 300 milliseconds to get a payload back, right? to get a response. And really this payload is pretty small. It's basically a post. It has all the comments in the post. And for every post, we have the user who is associated with that comment. So if you imagine a blog post where at the very bottom you have a comment section where users can log in and leave comments, this is basically what I'm simulating. And so this request takes about 300, you know, 350 milliseconds, which isn't that high, but as you add more comments, let's say this is a really popular blog post that had a lot of different users logging in, this would slowly start to creep up in terms of latency. And you have to either figure out a better way to do really efficient SQL queries or just cache the thing if they don't change that often. So I think this is a good scenario of when you could probably utilize caching. Let's go over to the application and I'm gonna walk you through the code a little bit. So even if you don't know what TRPC is, just imagine I have an endpoint and when you invoke this endpoint, it needs to get some data. So right now I kind of short circuited this if statement to basically always fetch data from the database, but I have a bunch of code in place already to make sure that you fetch data from a cache first of all, and if that cache data is there, we return it. Otherwise we do the, the query. So to set up a Redis cache, it's actually pretty simple. All I have to do is I have to import IO Redis as a package. And then I am creating a Redis client here using a URL, which was provided from Upstash uh, over here. Basically, I have that set up as an environment variable. And basically here I say, give me the cache data for post. Now you can put whatever string you want here. You could put a post ID or a unique identifier or something. But that is going to do a request to the Redis that's hosted on Upstash, return some data. And if that data exists, we just go ahead and return it. Okay. Otherwise we do a query to Prisma every single time. And then we set the data that came back from Prisma. So we say client.set post. Again, this could be a, uni a unique ID, like the post ID. And then we stringify all the data that came back from Prisma and we put it in Redis. And then secondly, we can actually put an expire time on this. So I could say, make sure this thing expires after 10 seconds. Now in a real system, you might want to do a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes. It kind of depends on the needs of your system. If users don't need to see the latest, greatest live version of data, you can make this higher. If you want users to have a better user experience and see live data, you want to make this lower, right? But the higher it is, the less strain it's going to put on your databases because you're caching that data for longer. Okay, so that's kind of like the caching setup. And again, we short circuited this so that I can show you in my application when I basically click this, it does a full Prisma fetch from the database. And this database is actually a real live database that is hosted on another service. All right, so this isn't a local running database. This is actually a database on a service. So what I want to do is I want to turn off the short circuiting I added here. I'm going to say if the cache is defined, we are going to return the cache. Okay. And Take note of how much faster this actually is. So it was about 300, 350 milliseconds before. And now when I do the request for the first time, it's going to cache that data. And if the data is already cached, it's going to return it. This dropped down to 67 milliseconds. So that was almost five times faster, right? If I do 350 divided by 67, it's 5.2 times faster. Now, again, since the expiration time is set as 10 seconds, the second time I do this, it, you know, it takes a full database query, but now notice I can keep on doing this. And at some point, like all these requests are super speedy. Okay. And that is the power of caching. If you have some type of computation that's pretty expensive, 
Maybe you're doing a SQL statement that has a bunch of joins in it, or you have to do multiple SQL statements and aggregate data together. Often you want to cache that so your users don't get affected by that slow performance and they can get that data and display it as fast as possible. So I showed you how to kind of get this set up. Again, I have a real Redis URL on Upstash. So the cool thing about Upstash is when your data is actually cached in Redis, you can go to this data browser and I can actually kind of go through my unique key that I had here and I can click it and I can see the JSON that I had stored. So here's all the user data that we kind of cached from Prisma from our Postgres database and it's just stored directly inside of the Redis database. You can also like change the expiration time if you want to, like you can change it to 30 seconds or I could just delete it straight off if I wanted to. Again, this is probably more for testing purposes, but it's cool that it's there. And if I refresh the page, that's automatically been expired because that's how that expire thing worked in Redis. So Upstash has a usage page, which kind of shows you nice graphs of like how much usage and bandwidth is going through your Redis cluster. Um, you know, how much your latency is, your data size and stuff like that. If you're into like tracking those type of analytics, very useful. So there's also some additional configuration you can add to your, your Redis instance. So you can turn on SSL if you want to. Um, this potentially might slow down your cache a little bit because it always takes more time to do the handshake. Um, you can set up some eviction. So you can basically evict keys whenever you want. You can do some auto scaling. The one thing I also wanted to hit on is that you can also use Redis for edge computing, right? So I created this as a regional Redis cluster, but if I go back and I create a new database, let me just go ahead and delete this one. I'm on the free tier, so I kind of have to delete the one I have before I can create a new one. So let's just delete the one I have. I'm gonna create a new one and I can actually create a global Redis cache. So I'll say like my cache, you can select the primary region, uh, I'll just say East one. You can also select some read regions if you want to like this. I can just go ahead and like fan this out to as many different regions as I want to. And again, that would basically take your data and distribute it to many different regions. So it'd be much faster for people who are on the West coast trying to hit my service because that cache will be stored on the West coast. But the thing I wanted to point out is that this is edge um, compatible, right? So if you wanted to actually use this in a Next.js middleware function, which runs on the edge, if you were deployed to Vercel or some other services, you can actually use this upstash slash Redis package to connect to an API endpoint to do the same type of uh, cache sets and cache gets, right? So this is great because now this stuff is going to run from your middleware functions, which is going to be closer to your users. And you don't even have to go to your backend endpoints to do that logic. Right now, the way I did it with my tier PC router is that this is going to run on the actual data center that's running my next application but you have the possibility to run this directly on the edge if you want and quickly return that cache data directly from the edge location versus having to go all the way to your database. So if you're interested in doing some type of edge caching, which again, this would be really useful for rate limiting. For example, in Next, if you wanna set up a middleware function where you wanna basically limit how many people are hitting your endpoints based on an IP address, you can use this Redis Upstash approach to store that type of rate limiting or the caching. If you want, you can go to the quick start guide and go to next 13 and it, sh and it shows you kind of how to use the upstash slash Redis package inside of your next app directory. If you wanted to do like server side components and kind of connect the Redis from your server side rendered components as well. Um, pretty awesome stuff. Now I will say that this isn't just set for Next.js. You can use Redis for anything, Like right? If you're not even using Next.js and you're using just Express or Python or Go, you can still use Redis in the Redis that Upstash provides directly in your API if you want to, if you're trying to find ways to speed up your system. And they even give you some cool examples of how you can connect to Redis using Node, PHP, Python, Java, Go, and Cloudflare workers if that's something that you're interested in. So I think that's all I kind of wanted to share with you all. Again, caching can become very, very important as your application scales and you have tons of requests happening every second and you have a lot of data. And at some point you'll find areas in your application where you can kind of take the data that's being requested very, very frequently and find a way to get that data back to the user as fast as possible. And typically using something like Redis because it stores this data in memory versus the database, which usually stores it in the file system. Um, there's some caveats to that. But usually storing data in the memory is going to be loaded and sent back to the user at a much faster pace than having to do a query every single time, especially as your queries get more complex. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Like always, be sure to check out Upstash if this is something that you think would be useful for your application at the very least. 
You can use it for doing API limiting, um, which is something that you probably want to do to kind of protect your application as well. But at some point you're going to want caching. And I think Redis is one of the de facto solutions for caching data if you want to cache your data. Okay, I think that's about it. Have a good day and happy coding.